painting techniques. So I know a lot of us are crafting for the fall holidays, but a lot of us are getting a head start on all of the winter holidays. So we thought it'd be fun to show you um, a really great paint set that is available at walmart.com and some really great wood surfaces that we also carry at walmart.com. So lots of great things to um, look around for and see which one really speaks to you. But um, today we are going to be using this really cute tree wood surface that of course is available on walmart.com. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to really simply make this buffalo check pattern. Um, and it might look a little intimidating on this project, but I promise one, uh, at the end of this demo, you guys will be pros at this. It's super simple and I can't wait to show you guys. I'm also gonna just give you guys some great tips and tricks on how to do some really simple polka dot patterns. So I'm excited, so let's get started. First off, I wanna say that um, we all of these that you see around me, all of these great projects were used um, only with this paint set. So this is our Folk Art Festival set and it's um, in store at Walmart and on walmart.com. So this really makes a great gift for the holidays too. If someone that you know um, loves crafting or painting, um, Folk Art is definitely one of my very favorite brands of uh, acrylic craft paint. It is so uh, rich and creamy and so opaque. Um, you know, you need so few coats. It is a really, really awesome paint. And the great thing about this set is that it has all the colors in the rainbow. So you really just need to buy this one set and then you can really craft anything that you want. As you guys can see here, I know the color schemes are pretty red and green and um, very holiday inspired, but um, there is a wide variety of colors in this set. So it's a really awesome gift or just a gift for yourself. So you guys, what you're gonna need is once you pick up one of these wood surfaces, the next things you're gonna wanna have to follow along with me for this demo is some stencil tape. So this is really actually striping tape. It is a really, really thin masking tape. You can find this at your local craft store, or if you can't find it, you can always um, just cut down the size of your masking tape. So whatever you have, you're gonna need some paint brushes, um, some water, and then lastly, I am using these styrofoam plates as my palette today. Uh, for this craft in particular, I don't wanna use any type of palette that's gonna be absorbent. So I don't wanna use paper plates, but I would um, wanna use like styrofoam plates, wax coated paper plates, wax coated palette paper, something that's not gonna soak up the moisture from your paint and the water that we're gonna to add to our paint to achieve this technique. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. So I'm gonna whip out my striping tape and I'm gonna start by unrolling a piece that is the length of my tree, or the width of my tree, I should say. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it down, okay? So it looks like that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing again, and I'm going to butt up my tape right on top of where I just, not on top, but right up against where I just put that first piece down, okay? And you're gonna keep doing that for our third strip of tape now. And so, what we did with this second piece is it was just acting as a little spacer. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And so without having to use a ruler or math or anything, which I'm really not a fan of, maybe you are at home, we're getting a perfectly even spacing so that our buffalo plaid or buffalo check, whatever you wanna call it, looks really neat and pretty. So, just like before, we're gonna take that piece of tape in between and then butt it up next to our other piece of tape. We're gonna do this all up our tree. And once you get the hang of it, it starts to go really quickly. And um, one thing too, I'm just kind of uh, using my fingers to make sure that my tape is really flush onto my surface because I don't want to get any paint underneath my tape. Oh, 
even though stripes are looking. Looks awesome. almost done you guys it's a little bit tedious but it's kind of relaxing it kind of feels like uh, knitting or crocheting it's just kind of mindless you get to zone out and prepare for the next step getting to the very tippy top. I'm gonna eyeball that last guy and place him right here. Okay, so now I just wanna make sure that these uh, pieces of tape are really flush to my surface. So just use your fingers, your hand, and just make sure that you really have that down. All right, so now what we're gonna do, you guys, and I'm gonna flip it to make my surface easier to work with. We are going to um, do this the other way. It's gonna be a lot quicker. Kind of starting in the middle. And so you guys, with this really uh, thin striping tape, we get this really, really concentrated pattern, which I love. And this buffalo check pattern is not only great for, of course, these really cute wood surfaces, but it's great for any uh, winter crafting. It's great for fall crafting. It's even great for spring crafting. You could do like a cute little uh, like picnic blanket pattern. So once we kind of get to these awkward parts, we're only gonna cut off or really tear off as much tape as we need.
Okay, so now once your Christmas tree kind of looks like a grid like mine does, we're gonna squeeze out some paint onto our palette. And today I'm gonna use medium gray, which is in our festival kit that we're using. And I'm gonna use just a smaller flat brush and I'm going to go ahead and paint in between my pieces of tape. So that's why we really wanted our uh, tape to be pretty flush to our surface because we didn't want our paint seeping underneath our tape. We don't want a super thick layer of paint, just a nice thin layers, make sure we get everywhere. And we're just making sure that all of those white spots turn into gray. Alright you guys, so I'm going to put my brush in my water basin and now we're going to remove the tape, all of it. Ah. This is the best part, <laughs> it's so satisfying. Alright you guys, so once you end up with a grid pattern like mine, what you we're going to do next is we are going, I'll show you guys my palette, we're going to set that aside. And I have a water basin here that I'm just cleaning my brushes with, so it's clean water. All we really did was put our gray brush in there and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water to my paint, okay? And I'm going to mix the paint with the water maybe a little bit too much water there. So we're just really watering down our paint. And so that's why I said when you're choosing your palette to place your paint on for this project, you're going to want a palette that is not very absorbent. So we're not looking for paper plates, we're not looking for anything that's going to soak up our water. And just make sure that your paint and your water are pretty well incorporated, okay? And another thing I'd like to mention too is when I'm doing this pattern, I like to be mindful of the width of my um, flat brush that I'm using. So I always like to try to find a width that's pretty similar to the size of my grid, my little squares. See, it's pretty similar. So that way when I do this next step, it makes it a lot easier and I'll show you how. So what we did by watering down our paint just now is we are lessening the opacity of our paint. So now what we can do is we're going to play a really fun game of connect the dots and connect all of our squares on our grid um, with our watered down paint. So just with a fairly steady hand, we're going to go up, getting more watered down paint as we need it. And be mindful, we don't want too much water because we don't want it to like go into areas of our pattern that we don't want it to go on. But we are looking to connect all those dots. And 
of course I used gray for our demo today, but of course you can use any color to achieve this look that you want. So right now I'm going vertically. And if you do get too much water on your pattern, just you can just uh, get a paper towel and get it up. So even if your lines that we're making right now are not incredibly even, that's okay. That's kind of the beauty of this technique. Our grid that we did with our tape, that looks really straight and neat. So as long as you just try your best filling in uh, this step that we're doing right now, it's going to look great. So we did our vertical lines and now we're going to go ahead and do our horizontal lines. And we are only going on the lines that have our squares. We're not going in the lines in between. Make sure to leave those empty. and then you are left with a really cute buffalo check pattern. So that's what we did for our first tree there and we achieved this really cute buffalo check pattern. Um, now I'm going to show you guys a little tip that I like to use whenever I create polka dots on my projects. So this one is really 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 simple. I just take my paintbrush and I use the end of my paintbrush, not where the bristles are but where I'm holding it. I'm going to add some more paint on my palette and I'm going to stick the end of my paintbrush in my little paint blob and dot. So you can use your paintbrush. You can really use um, like a pencil, anything you have in your craft room really. And we're just going to swirl a little bit to create that really nice circular pattern. It always makes your pattern look really natural if you add some polka dots hanging off of uh, whatever shape you're placing polka dots in because it makes it look like the pattern is continuing and it like, makes it look more organic. And the more paint you have on your tool, then the bigger your circle will be. And the bigger you swirl, the bigger your, your circle will be as well. And with that, you guys, those are two really fun and festive painting techniques that I hope that you guys will use for all of your holiday crafting. Like we said, you can find all of these wood surfaces that you see in front of me at walmart.com or in store at Walmart, um, as long as well as this really awesome folk art festival kit. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you loved this technique and you're watching our live stream now and you want to catch it again later, then you can go to our Plaid Crafts YouTube page and find this and rewatch it at your own leisure, as well as a lot of really um, awesome other demonstrations and tutorials we've done here on YouTube. So go check those out and with